The cave basins are two indoor concrete pools attached to closed nuclear reactors that were once used to produce plutonium for national defense. The basins are located near the Columbia River, about 35 miles north of Richland, Washington, on the Department of Energy's Hanford site. The basin stored and cooled the irradiated or spent fuel after it came out of the reactors. Each basin is roughly one-third the size of a football field and 20 feet deep. Each holds about 1.2 million gallons of water. For many years, the basins held the largest collection of spent nuclear fuel of any Department of Energy site in the nation. Spent fuel is very radioactive. Department of Energy contractor Floor Hanford finished a huge project that removed 2,300 tons of spent nuclear fuel, nearly 5 million pounds, from the basins in 2004. They dried the fuel and placed it into safe storage in a large facility in central Hanford, safely away from the Columbia River. During the spent fuel campaign, Floor Hanford workers removed 55 million curies of radioactivity, which was 95% of the radioactive material along the Columbia River. They then welded permanent covers on the fuel casks. The fuel corroded as it was stored underwater in the cave basins for many years. Corrosion contributed to forming sludge. Sludge is a combination of dirt, sand, rust, chemicals, fuel corrosion products, and decay or fission products. The sludge could be very dense and heavy or flighty and swirling. When Floor Hanford began sludge removal activities in 2004, the sludge coated basin walls, floors, tools, equipment, and other items that were placed in the cave basins over the years. Both basins together contained about 52 cubic yards of sludge, enough to fill eight standard dump trucks if the sludge were dry. About 75% of the sludge formed in the K East Basin. Floor Hanford worked with the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency and the Department of Energy to define plans for removing and carefully handling the sludge to protect workers and the environment. Capturing sludge as it swirled through the basin water was very challenging. Workers compared it to chasing smoke. Operators standing on grating above the basins used long-handled tools to reach into the water and vacuum the sludge into underwater tanks. Sludge particles in the basin water made it very cloudy. Workers had to lower cameras and lights into the basins to guide their work. One person said, the sludge didn't go where we wanted it to go, didn't behave as we wanted it to behave, and didn't stay where we wanted it to stay. In early summer 2007, floor workers finished capturing all of the sludge in the K East Basin and the bulk sludge in the K West Basin. At the same time, they finished pumping all of the sludge out of the K East Basin tanks into storage tanks in the K West Basin. They scored a triple victory. During sludge removal, Floor Hanford workers also removed large amounts of solid waste pieces called debris. Debris consisted of equipment, tools, hoses, and miscellaneous objects in the basins. Debris was hidden in the sludge and often blocked the suction tool's access to the sludge. Debris removal was very difficult work. Sometimes workers labored with special 20-foot long tongs to pick up tiny debris pieces that hardly filled a basket after a whole day's work. It was hard to separate small debris from the sludge. Floor Hanford operators removed tools, equipment, empty fuel canisters, canister racks, canister lids, pumps, hoses, and a variety of other objects. They also removed hundreds of fuel racks that weighed up to 600 pounds each. Sometimes it took a crew of 15 to remove a single large fuel rack. In total, Floor Hanford workers removed nearly 350 tons of debris and fuel racks from the K basins, an amount equal to nearly 11 fully loaded large size moving trucks. The debris was placed in large metal burial boxes and disposed in Hanford's Line Waste Disposal Facility, the Environmental Restoration Disposal Facility, or ERDF. Workers were involved in every step of planning and conducting the sludge and debris removal work. Crews devised an array of new tools and methods to retrieve sludge and debris. Suction tools on the end of vacuum hoses were called end effectors. Crews devised many specialized end effectors with unique names for many of them. One such attachment was called the Leon II 
after the worker who helped design it. Despite the difficulty of sludge and debris removal work, employees maintained a strong safety record. Active employee safety councils work with management to make safety a priority, reward safety, and strive for recognition in the Department of Energy's Voluntary Protection Program, a challenging safety system. By summer 2007, Floor's KBC workers had worked nearly 4 million hours without a day lost to injury. To remove the sludge from the tanks in the KE Basin, workers constructed and operated a specially engineered hose-in-hose -hose system. The system transferred the sludge through a pipeline for nearly half a mile into underwater tanks in the K-West Basin. The hose was a double-walled line of steel-reinforced rubber designed to contain the sludge in case of a breach of one of the hoses. The sludge was kept moving through the line by a total of seven pumps, one in each of four booster stations along the line. The other three operated in the K-West and K-East basins. Transferring K-Basin sludge through this system was a first-time activity using unique transfer technology. The process was especially difficult because the behavior of the sludge in the engineered system could not be completely simulated before the actual pumping began. The sludge was not a homogeneous mixture, and maintaining an even concentration of sludge in the transfer line was very challenging. Floor Hanford workers finished sludge transfers out of the K-East Basin in May 2007. The accomplishment was significant because the K-East Basin sludge had posed the greatest potential threat of escaping into the environment. Floor's president told workers that two million people down the Columbia River are safer today because of your work. The Department of Energy told the workers that they were making history. As soon as Floor finished transferring the sludge out of the K-East Basin, it began executing plans for the deactivation and demolition, or D&D, &D, of the basin as part of the overall cleanup of the Columbia River Corridor, or shoreline. The first D&D &D task is to reduce radiation dose caused by contamination on the basin floor. The contamination will be immobilized and shielded by pumping in a layer of grout. This step is performed before the water is removed from the basin because the water itself provides shielding from the radioactivity. Next, the water will be pumped out and taken in trucks to Hanford's liquid effluent treatment facility for treatment and disposal. The basin will then be backfilled with sand to provide temporary shielding and structural support for large demolition equipment. An excavator and other standard demolition tools will reduce the structure to rubble which will be disposed in Erdiff in central Hanford. Lastly, contamination in the soil underneath the facility that was caused by historical leaks will be removed and disposed at Erdiff. Buildings that remain in the 100K area also will be deactivated and demolished. After the sludge that is now stored in the K West Basin is treated and disposed, that facility will also be removed. When the K basins are gone, the reactor buildings themselves can be partially demolished and placed into interim safe storage, a process known at Hanford as cocooning. Cocooning removes 80% of the reactor building and then seals the remaining portion and applies a new roof to last 75 years. Floor Hanford, the Department of Energy, and the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency are working hard to clean out the K-Basin safely and efficiently to assure that the Columbia River and the region around Hanford is protected.